so glad to be here. But I feel that you feel confined. Oh, what a beautiful morning. The sun is hot. Yes, you are only 20. <laughs> be careful, Senora. Uh, I feel so tired and so slow. They should be saying mass. You can sit there, senor. There is one little lady. I won't go a little. I want a bench to myself. But there is none. That one over there is mine. The three priests sitting there. Rout the mouth. Si, senor. Have they got? No, indeed. They are still home. Just as if they were glued to the seat. No hope of their living. Come this way, Juanito. Oh, okay. You are. Are you speaking to me, Senora? Yes, to you. What do you wish? You have scared away the birds who are beating on my crops. What do I care about the birds? But I do. This is a public park. Then why do you complain that the priest have taken your bench? Senora, we have not met. I cannot imagine why you take the liberty of addressing me. Come this way, Juanito. Oh, what a ill natured old man. Why must he talk so fast and cross when they reach such an age? Oh, I'm glad he lost that bench too. Some see what you're scared of birds. Oh, yes, 
Why the bad chick is getting poor man? Oh, he's sweeping the perspiration from his face. Oh, here he comes. A king made him not waste more dust than his feet. No, indeed, senor. They are still talking. The authorities should have placed more benches here for this sunny morning. Well, I suppose I must resign myself and sit with the old lady. Good morning. Well, wow, you're here again. I repeat that we have not met. How is responding to your salute? Good morning should be answered by good morning. And that is all you should have said. You should have asked permission to see all this bench, which is mine. The benches here are public property. Why? You say that the one that preside is yours. Very well, senora, very well. I have nothing more to say. Say my old lady. She ought to be at home knitting and counting her beads. Don't grumble anymore. I'm not going to leave just to please you. If the ground were sprinkled a little, it would be an improvement. Do you use your handkerchief as a shoe brush? Why not? Then do you use your shoe brush as a handkerchief? What right have you to criticize my actions? A neighbor's right. <sighs> Juanito, give me my book. I do not care to listen to nonsense. You're very polite. Pardon me, senora, but never interfere with what does not concern you. I generally say what I think. And more to the same effect. Give me the book, Juanito. Was that you? Your sight is speaking. Keener than yours, sis. Oh, yes, evidently. As the hearts and the partridges. Ah, oh, do you hunt? I did, and even now oh, I... Yes, of course. Yes, senora. Every Sunday, I take my gun, and though you understand, and go to one of my estates near Arapaka to kill Thai. Yes, kill That is all you kill. Do you think so? I could show you once more head in my study room. Oh, yes. And I could show you a tiger's skin in my room, don't you? What is that room? Very well, senora. Please, allow me to read enough conversation. Well, you subside then. But first, I shall take a pinch of snuff. Will you have some? It is good. It is of the finest. You will like it. The daughters of the mothers I want to love. 
kiss me now as they will have a grand image. Those lies, I take it, are in a humorous view. I take them so too. There are some beautiful poems in this book. Ah, here. Twenty years past, he returns. You cannot imagine how it affects me to see you with all those glasses. Can you read without end? Yes, of course. At your age, you're jesting. Ask me to put that. I am very fond of good verses. Very fond. I even composed some in my youth. Good ones? Of all kinds. I was a great friend of Esprit Seda, Zorilla, Begirs, and others. I first met Zorilla in America. Why? Have you been in America? Several times. The first time uh, when I was only six years old. You must have gone with all of us and one of these cowboys. <laughs> not quite as bad as that. I am old, I admit, but I did not know Ferdinand and Isabella. <laughs> I was also a great friend of Congo Amor. I met him in Valencia. I am a native of that city. You are? Yes. I was brought up there, and there I spent my early youth. Have you ever visited that city? Yes, I do. Not far from Valencia, there was a villa there. If still there, you retain memories of me. I spent several seasons there. It was many, many years ago. It was near the sea, hidden away among lemon and orange trees. They called it. Let me see. What did they call it? Um, ma, ma, oh, Marisela. Marisela? Yes, Marisela. Is the name familiar to you? Yes, very familiar. If my memory serves me right, for we forgot as we grew up, and then live in that villa, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. And I assure you, I've seen many. Let me see. What was her name? Laura, Laura, Laura Lorente. Laura Lorente? Yes. Ah, you reminded me of my best friend. How strange. It is strange. She was called the Silver Maiden. Precisely, the Silver Maiden. By that name, she was known in that locality. I seem to see her as if she were before me now, at a window with red roses. Do you remember that window? Yes, I remember. It was the window of her room. She spent many hours there, I mean, in my day. <laughs> and I She was ideal. Fair as a lily, jet black hair and black eyes, with an uncommonly sweet expression. She seemed to cast radiance wherever she was. Her figure was beautiful, perfect. What forms of sovereign beauty got models in human clay? Uh, she was a dream. Oh, if you but knew that dreams was now on your side, you would realize what dreams come to. She was very unfortunate and had a sad of fear. Very sad. Did you hear of it? Yes. Oh, the ways of providence are strange. Good son. The gallant lover in the same affair. Ah, the jewel. Precisely. The gallant lover was my cousin, of whom I was very fond. Oh, yes, a cousin. My friend told me in one of her letters the story of the affair, which was truly romantic. He, your cousin, passed by on the horseback in the morning down the rose path at the moment. And he also tossed up to my balcony 
of bucket of flowers which he got. Yes, and later in the afternoon, the gallant horseman would return by the same path and would catch the bouquet of flowers she would toss at him. Am I right? Yes, they wanted to marry him with a virgin who she would not have. And one night, when my cousin waited under her window to hear her say, this other person presented himself unexpectedly. And it started to <coughs> There was a quarrel. And later the two. Yes, at sunrise on the beach. The person was badly wounded, and my cousin has to conceal himself for a few days and let her to fly. You seem to know the story well. And so do you. I have explained that a friend repeated it to me. As my cousin did to me. This is Laura. This is Laura. Laura, I just need to spy. She's entirely innocent. Uh, was it you, by any chance, who advised your cousin to forget Laura? Why? My cousin never forgot her. How do you account that police come back? Very well. I will tell you. The young man took refuge in my house, fearful of the consequences of the duel with a person highly regarded in that locality. From my home, he went to Seville and then came to Madrid. He wrote Laura many letters, some of them in first, but undoubtedly they were intercepted by her parents, for she never answered at all. Gonzalo then, in despair, believing his love lost to him forever, joined the army, went to Africa, and there, in a trench, met a glorious death, grasping the flag of Spain and whispering in the name of his beloved, Laura. <coughs> I could not have killed myself more gloriously. Uh, you, have, you must have been frustrated by the calamity. Yes, senor. As if he were my brother. I presume, though, on the contrary, that Laura, in a short time, was chasing butterflies in her garden, indifferent to regret. No, senor, no. It is a woman's way. Ah, even if it were a woman's way, the silver maiden was not of that disposition. My friend awaited years for days, months, a year, and the letter came. Until one afternoon, just at sunset, as the first stars were appearing, she was sent to leave the house, and with quickening steps, went on her way toward the beach, the beach where her beloved had raised his life. Then she wrote his name on the sand and then sat down upon the rock. Her gaze fixed up from the horizon, and then the waves murmured their turn at the end, slowly crept up to the rock where the maiden sat. And then the tide was with a boom and swept her out to the sea. Good heavens! And then the fishermen of that shore were on the town stone. I thought that it was a long time before the waves washed away the names written on the sand. You look like a head of me, I think when it's like out here. She lies worse than I do. Poor Laura. Poor Gonzalo. I will not <laughs> tell you that I made it just the letter. In three months, I ran off to Paris with a ballet dancer. <sighs> Faith is curious. Here are you and I, complete strangers, met by any chance, discussing the romance of the old friends of love. We have been discussing as if we were old friends. Yes, it is curious, considering the ill-natured prelude to our conversation. You scared me the words. I was unreasonable, perhaps. That was evident. Uh, are you coming again tomorrow? Most certainly, if it's a sunny morning. And not only I will not scare away the birds, I will bring a few crops. Thank you very much. Birds are grateful and adventure. Oh, I wonder where my name is. Oh, Petra! Petra! Oh. No, no, no. no. 
I will not reveal myself. I am grotesque now. Better than Siri Cole, the gallant horseman who passed the ribbon in her window to save flowers. Ah, oh, here she comes. That Juan Lito, he does half up with nursemaids. You are late. Well, the garden is not for you, Senora. Oh, how very nice. Yes, very nice. Thank you for me. You're welcome. Oh, they are very fragrant. My dear lady, this has been a great honor and a great pleasure. It has also been a great pleasure. <laughs> Goodbye then. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. If it is sunny. It is sunny. No, I will go to this if you do not object. This bench is at your disposal now. And I will certainly bring the crops. Tomorrow then. Tomorrow. Thank you. 